Swami Swayananda. Swami Swayananda Ji. Symbol that the inner light may light it in all beings and as different lights in different directions may people of all the different directions join in lightening the inner light. So I ask the dignitaries to come on stage. And Swamiji, I think you also. The Swami Suryananda is with us, yes? May I request uh, founder Yog Vidya Sukhdev ji to honor uh, President ICCR Dr. Vinay Sahasabuddhe. Ambassador of India, Parish Paravatiani. Yes, yes. May I invite uh, Swami Suryananda ji to welcome uh, Abhay Kumar ji, Deputy Director General, Indian ICCR. May I invite Sukhdev ji to welcome Trisha ji. You 
can announce the names, I will welcome them. <laughs> Dr. Stella Junger, Svenner, stellvertretende Bürgermeisterin von Hornbad Meinberg. And Welcoming Swami Suryananda Ji, President of the European Yoga Federation. And the stellvertretende Landesverbandsvorsteherin, Frau Meiser Laukamp. So we have well started, lightening a light, and flower for beauty of heart, and celebration life. So again, I want to welcome you to the World Yoga Summit on behalf of Yoga Vidya, on behalf also of European Yoga Federation United Consciousness, this is a special is a special occasion where we have different organizations coming together i'll first say a few words yoga vidya about yoga vidya yoga vidya is a large network of yoga ashrams yoga schools yoga teachers we have trained 23,000 yoga teachers, another 20,000 meditation course leaders, Ayurveda practitioners, and other practitioners. Worldwide, over one million people practice yoga now according what they have learned at a Yoga Vidya teacher on our web pages. Here in the main ashram, but Meinberg, we have 250 ashramites live permanently. Up to 1,000 guests can stay here. At the moment, we have 600 people, yoga aspirants in the ashram. Our concept is yoga in all its aspects, from the therapeutic to the sportive yoga, psychological yoga to the spiritual religious yoga, from physical exercises to meditation, from physiology to study of scriptures, to mantras and Hindu rituals. Yoga means unity and connectedness, so it has always been Yoga Vidya's concern to connect with other yoga teachers from other traditions and with other spiritual and health-oriented traditions. Yoga Vidya has been a member of various yoga federations from the very beginnings, and I myself have, have been on the board of various yoga associations, including the European Yoga Confederation, whose chairman, Jagat Gura Amrita Suryananda, is also present here. In every crisis, there is also an opportunity. During the pandemic, yogis also have learned the benefits of video conference. In particular, during that time, I was called to the advisory committee of United Consciousness under the leadership of Dr. Vikrant, and this conference is, has come out of these three years of being together. And I got also to the board of the European Yoga Federation under Chairman Amadio Swami Suryananda, who is sitting here. In many video conferences, we have discussed, worked out common worldwide standards for yoga teachers' trainings, which we will present on the 21st of June on the International Day of Yoga. I also became member of the Board of Advisors of Hindu Forum Germany, and its president, Gopi Prasad, is also among us, initiator of Gita Vidya. And so I'm very happy to see physically some yoga masters who I've seen only so far during many online meetings, 
and now I see them here in the conference. And I'm also happy to see many others again, some of whom I've saw in European yoga conferences here in Bad Meinberg of lately in Spain. This event is a collaboration of ICCR, the European Yoga Federation, United Consciousness and Yoga Vidya. India is chairing this year G20 and Civil 20 this year. And ICCR, the Indian Council of Cultural Relations, is coordinating global events for this purpose. This global conference on yoga beyond physiology is one of these G20, C20 events organized by ICCR. So I'm very grateful to Honorable Dr. Vinay Sahasrabude, president of ICCR and his team, as well as the Embassy of India for the support we are getting. I'm also pleased that dignitaries from the surrounding area, the city of Hornbad Meinberg and of the county Lippe, and the county councillors Hartwig Stork and Otto Adam are here. And I'm especially happy that Deputy Mayor of the city of Hornbad Meinberg is here and will give a short welcoming message. So we welcome Dr. Stella Junger Schwenner. Dear honored guests, dear friends and colleagues in Hornbad Meinberg, Namaste. <laughs> it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to, in the name of our hometown or small town, Hornbad Meinberg, nestled in the midst of the most beautiful countryside, right in the heart of Germany, on this special occasion where the summit or the beginning of the summit today marks the start of great days, of special days of joy, of dedication, of celebration, of yoga, of discussions, and of joy. And we are proud to be host these special events, these important events. We have guests from at least, I guess, five different countries here. Twenty. 20 different countries, so <laughs> a bit more. So we're not, we're more the proud. <laughs> and we wish you all successful meetings, nice and special and good discussions, and the pleasant of stay. Namaste and thank you all. United Consciousness is a worldwide initiative to overcome divisions, to promote connectedness, bring together diverse organizations. United Consciousness has organized many numerous events with representatives of from more than 120 countries. And Dr. Vikrant, the initiator, always makes it a point we want to have every continent represented. And we, I think we managed to have that here also. And so I want to to turn the floor over to Dr. Vikrant, Director of United Consciousness. Honorable President ICCR, Ambassador of India in Federal Republic of Germany, and uh, Honorable Guest on the stage, and my beloved fellow beings. iPhone and Microsoft and yoga has one thing in common. They are least used to their potential. <laughs> my mother uses iPhone for calculations, like a calculator. It has been a matter of thought that yoga should be seen in its full potential beyond physiology only. And this idea was conceived by 
our honorable president iccr dr vinesh sahasrabuddhe ji iccr then thought to have a two days international conference with this topic shaping the future world with yoga beyond physiology why do we say beyond physiology i was recently going through few articles post pandemic the total population of the world which is struggling with mental disorders as per who is around 1000 million people which makes 1/8 of the population of the planet the global cost to deal with this mental health as per a research by harvard university is 5 trillion dollars <coughs> let me tell you how much big this amount is if i would like to compare it with the united nations budget in 2023 The UN budget in in 2023 is 3.25 billion dollars, and the total cost to recover from total cost of this mental health for this planet is five trillion dollars. It is so the total budget of United Nations for a year is only 0.0006 percent. of the cost of the mental health so yoga provides a solution to it but it is least used in that direction across the world as they say there is a as they say mind is a monkey but if you go deep mind is a monk with a key <laughs> and key lies within us and yoga is that key 195 verses of yoga sutra only one verse talks about asanas but still 90% of the yoga across the world is basically about asanas so that's why i said it's least used which is the objective of this conference to use it more that's why we have identified seven verticals of discussion in this conference physical certainly is an important aspect second is psychological third is spiritual dimension to it why physiological because this body is the gift of god to us and how do we keep this body is our written gift to the god then comes spiritual understanding through yoga that we are not human beings having spiritual experience we are spiritual beings having human experience we are too temporary to have permanent problems in life then is the scientific dimension of yoga i always say science is the exploration of truth spirituality is the experience of truth and art is the expression of truth so in these two days we'll see all these facets also then is the behavioral dimensions of yoga will also be discussed can we develop an ability to focus defocus and refocus at our own will then the philosophical dimension of yoga will be also discussed this prakriti and purush as as yog sutra says be prakriti laya be one with the nature it is the need of the hour to be one with the nature the global cost of adopting to climate impact is 
It will be around $300 billion in 2013, which will be 10 times of the budget of United Nations. So when we become one with the nature following the yogic way of living, it will be good for our ecological balance also. And the last is, but not the least, ethical and moral dimensions of yoga, yamas and niyamas. So all these dimensions will be discussed here. I welcome representatives of all 20 countries on behalf of United Consciousness, ICCR, Yogvidya Germany, and uh, European Yoga Federation. Together with yoga, we can create a world of Vasudhav Kutumbakam, one earth, one family, one future, which is the motto of G20 nations under India's presidency this year. I will stop my talk with a small anecdote which I love very much. So there is a small child. He went to a shopkeeper with his mother. Shopkeeper opened the vessel and told that small child, take as many as chocolates you want, handful of chocolates. That small child refused. He said, no, I don't want. The shopkeeper was impressed. A three-year-old child is refusing for chocolates. He looked at the mother and he said, don't worry, mother won't object. You take it. Take a handful of it. He refused. He said, I don't need. Shopkeeper was super impressed. He said, okay, fine. I won't even charge money. I'm giving it to you. You take it. The child said, no, I don't want it. Shopkeeper was so super impressed. He himself took a handful of chocolates and handed it over to the child. Suddenly, something happened. Child took both of his hands, took all the chocolates, and put, poured it in his pockets and was happy. Mother was surprised, and the shopkeeper was super surprised. What happened to the patience of this child? Then when they were going back, mother gave a pack at his back, and he said, you were such a nice kid. You were not taking chocolates when he was telling you to take Chocolate, handful of chocolates. Why didn't you take that time? And when he gave you, why did you take later? The child very innocently replied, Oh mother, when I was going with you to the shopkeeper, I had thought initially only that if he will offer me handful of chocolates, I will refuse. If he will say that take handful of chocolates, I will refuse because my hands are little, only little will come. <laughs> I was waiting patiently, <laughs> impressing the shopkeeper by, by my good deeds, good actions, so that being pleased by my good deeds, he himself should offer with his big hands. <laughs> and he said, Mother, I know, when he gives with his big hands, we get so much that all our pockets get filled with bliss and happiness. So dear friends, I'm sure in these two days of this conference, with our sincere efforts of this yoga sadhana, he will provide us so much of bliss that we all will go back with our pockets filled with happiness, joy, and health. Thank you very much. Now, in order to continue our uh, stream of wisdom thoughts, may I invite another guest who is with us today. Her name is Trisha Sachlekhaji. She is the director of Tagore Center, Embassy of India, Berlin. And she is also a famous author. And she comes from my own state in India, Madhya Pradesh. May I welcome you, madam. Thank you, Vikranji. Um, namaskar. Um, Honorable President ICCR, Ambassador Harish sir, DDG ICCR, um, Deputy Mayor Hornbad Meinberg, Head of County Hornbad Meinberg, honored guests, and beloved yogis. 
On our way over to the ashram this morning, um, President ICCR and I were having a, having a beautiful conversation. Uh, we were discussing the concept of healing. We were talking about how wonderful the concept is and the word itself is, because it's one that describes a much more holistic approach, um, one that incorporates mind, body, and soul. We were discussing it, and um, we were trying to find a Hindi word that reflects the same approach. Um, and frankly, despite both of our strengths in Hindi, or what we like to believe is our strengths in Hindi, we were drawing a bit of a blank until we realized that a holistic approach to healing, which encapsulates mind, body, and soul, the word for that is, of course, yoga. It's not a literal translation, but that is what yoga is. Um, because yoga, or yoga as a practice, is about creating balance. It's about addressing every aspect of our being. It's about looking at all of our koshas, all of our doshas, all of our chakras. It's about unity, and as you know, it's about oneness of self and environment. In a few days' time, the world will celebrate the ninth International Day of Yoga. Um, and this year, the theme for International Day of Yoga is Yoga for Vasudev Kutumbkam, which, as Dr. Uh, Vikran just reminded us, translates to one earth, one family, one future. And today, I'd like to share a vision, which I believe you all share with me, of a world that is shaped by that belief. Um, a vision of a world which is peaceful, shaped by the transformative power of yoga and its profound philosophy. Uh, where yoga offers a pathway towards harmony, unity, tranquility in a world that's marred by conflict. Because yoga isn't um, merely a physical exercise, but a holistic practice that goes beyond the physiological to nurture our mind, body, soul, and has the potential to heal fractures in our society. Whether it is the recognition of our interconnectedness or the call to embark on a journey of self-discovery and realization. Yoga reminds us that true transformation starts from within, which is why uh, it gives me such great pleasure to see here today, uh, particularly uh, since I'm a part of the wider ICCR family and this event is organized by ICCR in collaboration with Yoga Vidya, United Consciousness, and the European Federation for uh, Yoga. It gives me such immense pleasure to see participants from 20 countries here, here to celebrate the very principles um, that we've just discussed, here to celebrate um, the idea of healing, here to celebrate the collective, collective practice of yoga, both on and off the mat, so that we can foster a global community, a community that stretches beyond 20 countries, I should hope, um, where peace comes not just as an aspiration, but a living reality, and where healing involves not just ourselves, but the entire world. Thank you so much. Now may I welcome, for the welcome address, head of the county, Ms. Ina Mays. We all are in Germany and uh, Technically, she is the host of our host. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Sorry, I must speak in German. My English is not so good. Can you Über translate? Übersetzen ins Deutsche. It's okay. So, sie wird übersetzen. Also, wenn Sie erst ein paar Worte sagen und dann wird es das Englische übersetzt. Herr Pritz, Frau Bürgermeister, war stellvertretender Bürgermeister, seine Exzellenz, der Botschafter, sehr geehrte Ehrengäste, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren. Ich freue mich riesig, heute hier Amen. zu sein. Es war ähm, eine Überraschung für mich, der Landesverbandsvorsteher 
hat heute leider keine Zeit, ist verhindert, er ist im Urlaub, so dass ich die Ehre habe, ihn heute hier zu vertreten und überbringe Ihnen die herzlichsten Grüße guests, des I Landesverbandes Lippe. Like to thank you and um, yes, it was a bit of a surprise der, for me ja, to traditionell be here at this mit Hornwald Meinberg eine enge Verbindung hat, bevor Mitte der 90er Jahre die sogenannte Kurortekrise begann, war so Hornbad Meinberg eine wohlhabende, kleine zugegebenerweise, aber eine wohlhabende Stadt und lebte von den damals sogenannten Kurorten. Und jetzt habe ich es verstanden. <lacht> Noch mal kurz, kurz übersetzen. Dann kam ein ja schon politisch damals von der Regierung gewollter Bruch und hat die Bäder und somit auch das damalige Staatsbad Bad Meinberg, was dem Landesverband Lippe gehörte, in eine tiefe Krise gestürzt. Bad Meinberg hatte Probleme lange und auch heute noch finanzieller Art, ich glaube, die sind nicht wegzuleugnen, umso Schöner und wertvoller ist es hier, das Yoga-Zentrum in Bad Meinberg zu haben. Okay, just to Nicht nur briefly, um Bad Meinberg kann sich glücklich schätzen, <lacht> solch eine Institution. Okay, just to summarize briefly, um, this was about Hornbad Meinberg. Up until the 1990s, Hornbad Meinberg was a very affluent spa town. Um, and then came a crisis in the German health system. So, um, yeah, that was what the speaker has been uh, talking about up until now. <laughs> and hopefully we get the technical side sorted. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, der Landesverband Lippe ist sehr glücklich und sehr stolz, dass wir dieses Zentrum hier in Lippe so the local haben und ich glaube, diese heutige Lippe Veranstaltung und die ganze Festwoche zeigt, that we have this event here die Welt guckt nach Lippe und uh, auch nach Bad Meinberg. Der internationale Besuch dieser Veranstaltung zeigt es, wie wichtig they show Ashram how für Lippe this ist, how und nicht this nur Ashram für Lippe, for sondern not just for Lippe, in den for the local region, gesagt wurde, für die ganze Welt. Ich wünsche dieser world. Veranstaltung And I wish viel Erfolg everyone, uh, in this event und tragen Sie dazu bei, um, dass Lippe und hier Bad Meinberg And noch bekannter wird. Ich I wünsche Ihnen alles Gute. This and, uh, this Ashram and Lippe will become even more well known. Thank you very much for uh, an enthusiastic welcome. And I was telling you as yoga is ability to focus, defocus. So closing my eyes, I was trying to focus only on English. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you for wonderful words, madam. So now may I invite uh, on the dais, Deputy Director General of ICCR, Shri Abhay Kumarji, a very good human being, a career diplomat, and a poet also. Please. Welcome. Namaskar, <coughs> Honorable President of ICCR, His Excellency Ambassador of India to Germany, the Director of the Tagore Center, President of the European Yoga Federation, and other distinguished guests, and most of all, our host, Sukhdev Ji. Namaskar. Samatvam Yoga Uchyate, which means yoga is a balanced state balanced state of body, a balanced state of mind. And you know, life is all about balance. <clears throat> Yoga karmashu kausalam, 
which means yoga is dexterity in actions. And we are going to have these two days of deliberations on the mysteries of yoga and the power of yoga and how yoga can help us realize the untapped potential a human being has. For myself, when I was growing up as a child in 1980s, I had no idea of yoga, even as an Indian. My parents neither practiced pranayama nor had any knowledge of asanas. It was in Nepal, actually, when I was posted there as a diplomat, I started learning yoga myself. Thanks to yoga teacher from the Indian Council of Cultural Relations. And uh, I realized that after years of practicing yoga, that Indian lifestyle itself, from waking up till you go to sleep, is based on fine yogic practices and philosophy. Just to give you some example, the, when we wake up, the first act in the morning is best is, is is to go for morning ablutions and a person in india traditionally before the western toilets came used to sit in a squatting position while one's intestine is pressed by his thighs, helping to empty the bowels. And it's a yoga posture known as Uttakat Asan. For those who you uh, hear, there are many yoga experts, many yoga teachers, you'd, you'd, uh, call, you'd support that. Then, the second act in the morning is to brush the teeth either with a twig of the neem tree which is which which is known to have medicinal properties instead of the brush we use now plastic After some exercise, one goes for a bath and offers water to the sun, doing Surya Namaskar. Surya Namaskar is a set of six asanas, which are repeated twice, and prayers are offered to the deities. And these prayers are known as Shabda Pranayam. That is repetition of words without breaking one's breath. After morning prayers, in India, as you are sitting now, there's a tradition to sit on a wooden tablet called Pidha. in Ardh Padmasan, half lotus pose. And that pose is known as Bhojanasana, 
Sukhdev ji has already started. <laughs> and Bhojanasana controls the blood circulation, especially the Apan Bayu. As you know, our body has five pranas. Pran, Apan, Saman, Uran, and Vyan. Padmasana controls the prana and blood circulation and keeps our knee joints healthy and spine straight. If you look at the Indian classical dances, many of you are familiar with it. Indian classical dances consist, they have their roots in Yoga Sutra. Whether it be a Bharat Natyam performer or Odyssey performer, if you look carefully at their movements, you will find that what they are performing are a series of Yogasanas and Mudras. And Mudra is the highest stage of Yogasana. According to Hat Yoga, Pradipika. When I was a child, I used to play these games like Kabaddi and Chika. And in these games, you cannot win if you break your breath. So those who could hold the breath the longest would, would win these games. So I'm delighted that Yoga Vidya at a place like Meinberg, Bath Meinberg, which I had never heard of, <laughs> is, is training yoga teachers. And Sukhdev ji was telling me that thanks to Yoga Vidya, each town of Germany, each major town of Germany has a yoga teacher. What an achievement. And I'm delighted also to note that all of you are listening to this sitting in Padmasan or Ardha Padmasan pose. And when I arrived here yesterday, they invited me to perform Homa at 5 a.m. And I asked how many people turn up. <laughs> and Sukhdev ji said that zero to 10. And it's, uh, which is the Homa is followed by satsanga and by yoga, practice of yogasana. And he was very kind enough to invite me to the canteen where only sattvic food is served. As you know, in a stanga yoga, the yoga doesn't begin with asana. It begins with yam and niyam. And then we reach to asana and, and pranayama and dhyana. So, 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 so the canteen food, which my my colleague Gaurav, he was saying he's again he's he's also taken to the lotus pose now, uh, which was the khichdi, you know, uh, or 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 to that extent that even even milk is not used, cow milk is not used. What what we found was the curd made of soya from soya curd, so not hurting animals. And Narendra ji, who is sitting somewhere here, who is the in charge of director of the center, he took me around and then took to the canteen uh, where the waste disposal, he showed me that how, how should you separate the dry waste and the wet waste, and uh, 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 which will be composted and energy would be made. So this place is not only 
it does not only teach you yogasana but also teaches you a lifestyle as our honorable prime minister says what we need today is lifestyle for environment l i f e life lifestyle for environment and this is the lifestyle they are teaching here something i have been trying to teach my neighbors that let us compost as we face the 21st century the greatest challenges our planet faces today are of climate change biodiversity loss and environmental pollution and this is this is the only way as as we have this wisdom of from the ancient texts this is the only way to the change which we bring to ourselves change we bring to our our lifestyles every day is the only way to save our planet and i'm glad that yoga vidya and uh, and all of you together are bringing this change thank you thank you abhay ji may i have the opportunity to invite now president of european yoga federation italy swami suryananda ji swami ji is a traveler a yoga master and has contributed in spreading the world of yoga the practices of yoga across the world heartily welcome swami ji i pray my angel amelia rossi to become nearby me please you want to come here because i prefer uh, speaking italian is easier for me okay can we get this Allora, innanzitutto saluto l'onorevole presidente della ICCR. First of all, I would like to greet the honorable president of the ICCR. L'ambasciatore dell'India. The Indian ambassador. Ma anche tutti questi meravigliosi ospiti. But also all this Okay. And all this great technical problem we resolve we are in germany we resolve everything eh? <laughs> okay bene stavo ringraziando queste meravigliose persone che sono venute a sostenerci in un certo senso. So first of all, it's okay now. Yeah. First of all, I would like to say thanks to all these honorable guests and people who came to support us here. Today. Abbiamo bisogno di loro, abbiamo bisogno del loro della loro presenza, del loro supporto per poter cambiare il mondo. We need them. We all need your support in order to change the world. Quando diciamo namaste, normalmente, when we say namaste normally, chi stiamo salutando? Who are we greeting to? Davanti a noi c'è una persona. In front of us there is a person. Ma quale parte di questa persona stiamo salutando? But which part of this person are we greeting to? Questa persona è una costituzione, una composizione di tante cose. This person is a composition, it's a full complex of different things. Ma stiamo anche salutando 37.000 miliardi di cellule che compongono il suo corpo. But we are not just greeting the different parts, we are also greeting the 37 trillion cells that are composing that person. 
37 mila miliardi di esseri intelligenti. 37 trillions of uh, intelligent beings. Quando sono in armonia è la salute ed è una cosa stupenda. When they are all in harmony, this is health and this is something extraordinary. Ma quando una parte di queste cellule perde la sua etica, but when even a small part of these cells lose its ethics, questa è la malattia. This is illness. Ora osserviamo l'umanità. Now let's observe the humanity. Anche l'umanità è, come vi posso dire, un corpo, un'entità. Even humanity is like a body, is ethical. Sono una entità costituita. L'umanità è un'entità costituita. It's like a, a constituted a entity formed completely. Quando questa parte del, queste parti dell'umanità perdono la loro etica, When the, a part of this entity lose the ethic, allora ci troviamo nella malattia. Then we are in illness. Che, che qualcuno chiama guerra. That somebody can, may refer to as a war. È semplicemente una malattia dell'umanità. It's uh, just simply like uh, the illness of the humanity. Quindi riportare l'umanità all'etica significa riportare la pace so, e la salute. So taking back the humanity to health means to go back to peace and wealth. Pertanto bisogna insegnare all'umanità usando lo slogan di Ganti a stare uniti nella diversità. So we should start to uh, to teach the humanity uh, the Gandhi's uh, the Gandhi sentence uh, unity in diversity che io amo tanto e che è diventato il motto della nostra European Yoga Federation that I love uh, a lot this motto and it's become the motto also at the European Yoga Federation attraverso l'unità nella diversità stiamo cercando salute Uh, going towards the unity in diversity, we are looking for health, benessere, wellness, gioia di vivere, uh, the joy of living. E in questo, questo coincide col progetto anche dello yoga. And all this is uh, about the project of yoga. Quindi invito tutti a stare uniti nel rispetto della diversità. So I invite each and all of you to stay united in, uh, under the, the differences, uh, with the differences. Namaste. <laughs>
the convener of United Consciousness India. At the outset, let me take the opportunity to convey my greetings and thanks to uh, Yoga Acharya Sukhadev. Thank you, sir, for organizing this as president of the Yoga Vidya Academy. May I also take the opportunity to um, especially thank uh, Swami Suryananda, the president of the European Yoga Federation from Italy. Thank you, sir, for your uh, contribution in making this possible. My uh, immense thanks to uh, Vineji Sahasra Buddha, president of the ICCR. Thank you, sir, for supporting this function here. In, uh, this wouldn't have been possible without the full and wholehearted uh, support of ICCR. Um, the Deputy Director General of ICCR, Abhay, thank you for your contribution. Um, um, and of course, my colleague, Director of the Tagore Center, Trisha, thank you very much for your effort. And of course, um, our host here, uh, Mayor of uh, Hornbad Mainberg, Dr. Stella Junger Schwena, thank you, Madam. And um, also, um, very much the um, uh, effort by uh, the head of the county, Ms. Ina Meze Lokamp. Thank you. Yogis and yoginis who are here in the audience, brothers and sisters, thank you for your presence here. When I was invited here to um, take part in today's inaugural ceremony and look into yoga beyond physiology, it set me thinking. In India, of course, you have heard yoga is union. It's uh, union of mind and body, union of man and nature, union of thought and action. It is union. But we also look at yoga as uh, one of the important uh, outcomes of a system of philosophy, six systems of philosophy, um, where our ancient sages thought about the various ways in which you can think and organize life. The Sankhya system, which led to yoga and the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, expound the system of philosophy. And eventually, after further discussions, the whole range of philosophy evolved, starting from materialism of Charvaka to the Sankhya, Yoga, Mimamsa, thereon finally culminating in uh, the Advaita Vedanta of uh, Shankaracharya. The focus all through has been, of course, on this essential uh, concept that everything animate and inanimate is one. And as Swamiji just before me said, when you do namaste, it is of course a union of mind and body, thought and action, man and nature, but it is also the divinity in me uh, respecting the divinity in the person before me. So uh, I think it was this concept essentially that permeated, this concept of oneness, of both animate and inanimate, living and non-living, uh, this concept of oneness that permeated. But it is not an easy concept. It, one could intellectualize it, but to experience it and to feel it is to achieve samadhi, which is uh, a product of many lifetimes. So on a day-to-day -day aspect, how do you convey such a complex experience to common people? I think that is where the great Yogacharya Patanjali came up with this, uh, with the Yoga Sutras, um, simplified it, made it into bit-sized uh, uh, concepts that people could consume, understand, and practice. We in India believe that, of course, there are many paths, and hence, of course, the path of karma, the karma yoga, the path of bhakti for those who are more uh, uh, inclined towards prayer and, uh, and, and contempt. Uh, so the prayer, the bhakti marga, the bhakti yoga came up for those with that inclination. And of course, you have the gnana marga, the, the, the way of the mind to achieve samadhi. Uh, but for those who are more intellectually oriented, for societies that are more mentally focused and mentally oriented. Along came other systems. You had uh, the trio of yantra, tantra, and mantra, the concept of managing our energies through space, through yantras, through sounds, through mantra, and through tantra, through mudras, through actions, through various uh, chanting and uh, incorporating all of these. Uh, 
But there was also a realization that not everyone is at the same level. We all have different sanchit karmas and prarabdha karmas. So not all are at the same level. You have young bodies and old souls and old so young souls in old bodies. So we, have, uh, we are all at different levels of evolution, physically, emotionally, mentally, and, uh, and at the level of our souls. So they said, uh, everybody takes depending on their current level of evolution. Of course, physiology is important because physiology is most basic. It is survival. The instincts for survival are inherited. They are biological. And hence, the first step of the ladder, of course, was physiology. What kind of asanas could you use to make yourself fitter, to make yourself more agile? The next step, after you master the physiology, the body, was to, in a graded manner, look at mastering your emotions, the emotional body, the kosha dealing with emotions. That's the next level. And of course, they said, if you are at a slightly higher level than this, maybe you could look at mastering your mental body, your thoughts, your, the thought forms that you create, the kind of uh, uh, thought radiation that you indulge in. And that was the next level uh, in the process. And once these were done, it had to be accompanied by a system of yama and yama, including pratyahara, where you adhered to a regime, a discipline in life that made your life more worthwhile, more blissful, and uh, more purposeful. Many a time in India too and elsewhere, the usual um, image of a person practicing yoga or of a yogi is someone, Swamiji, pardon me for saying this, someone who has in orange robes and probably up in the Himalayas away from society. But that was not the concept when it came about. Um, the concept is if we are not part of society, and if we do not contribute to society, we are of no use to humanity or to society. The idea of yoga was to be in a state of bliss while performing your day-to-day -day activities. To be in your family as a householder, do your duties as a householder, do your duties to your family, to the society that you live in, and to the country that you are, to Mother Earth, to environment, and to the world at large. How can you contribute while leading your day-to-day -day life without having to withdraw? Because the purpose of taking a human birth, according to uh, our scriptures, is to experience and learn from experience in a physical body. Withdrawing from the world and withdrawing from experiences around you would defeat the very purpose why we take a human form. And hence, the whole focus was how do you live in the world, but develop an attitude, have control over your emotions, harness your body, which is the instrument you have, to achieve the goals for which you have taken birth. Not an easy task, but the first step indeed is physiology. But that is just the first step. It is possible that many would stop at the first step. That is their level of evolution. Hopefully, if not in this lifetime, in the next, they will take the next step. Our effort, I think, in today's conference is to make known that there are more steps, that there are more efforts that you could do. And you don't have to take many more lifetimes to learn, to understand, and to imbibe. It is possible, and uh, the good efforts of today's conference organizers makes this possible for us to learn a little bit more about these, and through you, since many of you are trainers, to take the message across to all those you are associated with in your professional and personal lives. This is not an easy task, because I think physiology is attractive and also complete. So to go beyond, you must have a drive. Uh, but the first point of generating that drive is to have an awareness that there is something beyond. So I think today's, uh, today's conference 
is the first step in generating that awareness. Thank you uh, for, for, for organizing this. To all the organizers, thank you for making it possible. In Germany, yoga is very popular. We celebrate this week the International Day of Yoga on the 21st in, uh, in Berlin and many other cities. This is the time of the summer solstice. The sun goes down only at 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. or even later. It's a great time of the year, and having lived here and experienced my first European winter, I can tell you why the, the summer solstice is so eagerly awaited so that we experience the energy and the beauty of the sun god. But thank you very much for being here on uh, this happy occasion. Um, and I hope you will take this message across. And uh, once again, I appreciate the efforts of the organizers. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you, Honorable Ambassador of India and the Federal Republic of Germany for an insightful talk about the importance of physiology and beyond. And thank you for enlightening, sir, because yesterday when I arrived here and I saw that it is still light till 11. So I was confused whether, how long will it continue like this? Then I thought so many yogis got gathered here. Probably that's why the sun is refusing to set. Thank you for increasing my knowledge. So now the time has come that uh, we wish to listen, the person whose vision made all this possible. I am referring to Dr. Vinay Sahastrabuddheji. Vinayji is the president of Indian Council of Cultural Relations. He has been a parliamentarian, member of parliament in India, chairman of parliamentary committee of HRD, he is a statesman, thinker, author of many books, and a widely read columnist in many famous national and international newspapers in India. He himself is practitioner of yoga and an exponent of ancient wisdom for holistic well-being. With all respect and humility, can we have you, sir? Thank you, Vikranji, for a very generous introduction. All the dignitaries on the dais, starting from the man whose efforts are responsible for bringing all of us together, my colleague, Dr. Vikran Singh Tomer, who is the convener of the United Consciousness. Also, the Ambassador of India in Germany, Mr. P. Harish, the President of the European Yoga Federation, Swami Suryanandaji, the Mayor of this uh, beautiful township, Dr. Stella, the Head of this particular county, who is also present over here, Ms. Ina, my colleague Abhay Kumar, Trisha Saklecha, and last but not the least, because of uh, whose generosity we are all uh, going to experience his hospitality here, in a way, who is presiding over this uh, wisdom of bliss, and bliss is Sukha, and you are the Sukha Dev. So, <laughs> And all the yogis and yoginis uh, who have assembled over here, first of all, namaskar and greetings to all of you. I am not a student of philosophy with which yoga has a very organic relationship for that matter. Neither I am uh, deeply spiritual in the sense of uh, the science of spirituality. 
But as a practitioner and basically as a President Indian Council for Cultural Relations, let me present you a perspective as to why this particular initiative was taken by the ICCR. As we know, the International Yoga Day or the International Day of Yoga, some people say it IDY, some people say it IYD, I don't know. So whatever it is, has now become pretty established all over the globe. In 2015, thanks to the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, the United Nations passed a resolution and accepted the Indi Indian proposal of observing 21st June, the longest day on the earth, as the International Day of Yoga. And there onwards, uh, if I may say that the yoga fraternity has not looked back. We are moving. And many more people are coming and becoming a part of this yoga fraternity all over the world. But then, as it happens, yoga coming from India, generally all that comes from India, people in other parts of the globe attach or see a kind of an element of mysticism in it. And therefore, it was required that we demystify yoga. It is a science. And therefore, uh, we at the Indian Council of Cultural Relations thought that coming together on the IDY, participating in yoga exercises, trying to understand a little bit on that particular day is important. No doubt it is important, but it is not enough. We have to evolve a comprehensive understanding of what yoga is all about. Because without understanding, it becomes a mechanical action. And therefore, in 2018, we decided to have an annual conference on yoga happening in various parts of the globe. The first such conference we organized with the help of the University of Mumbai, which has a full-fledged department of yogic sciences. And the person who provided leadership to this uh, particular department, Dr. Shubhada Zoshi, a very well-known academic from Mumbai, is here. She and her department helped us organizing this conference, which happened in New York. In 2019, we organized similar such conference, and that time the venue was London, and the Swami Vivekananda Yoga Anusandhan Sanstha, S. Vyasa, again a very reputed institution in India into yogic sciences, helped us. In 2020, due to pandemic, we could not do anything. 2021, pandemic was still around, but we organized a virtual conference with the help of some people in Africa. Because we realized that the African traditions and African uh, considerations about wellness have some similarity with yoga and yogic sciences. And therefore, finding the commonalities between the African practices and the yoga, that international webinar was organized in 2021. Last year, we were invited by an institution in Seoul, in Korea, to organize this conference. And again, with a university in India, we organized an international conference on yoga in Seoul. And today, we are in the heart of Germany, here. And uh, I'm happy that uh, some 20 nations are represented by you. Uh, a gathering of about 120 people, if I understand correctly, uh, Vikranji. So this is a kind of a endless journey. It's, a, it's our collective quest to understand more, to go deeper into the yogic sciences and try to find out as to our consciousness and the knowledge discipline of yoga how we can evolve some kind of a synergy between the, between the two. Today, when we are just about two days away from uh, 
International Day of Yoga. Because this conference also we organize on the eve of uh, IDY, generally speaking. And I'm happy all of you have come, participated and will be contributing in the churning of ideas that will go on for another two days. We have achieved uh, remarkably, I would say, after the establishment of the International Day of Yoga. Yoga fraternity is growing. There are many people who are both in the right sense and in the wrong sense of the term, finding that there is some business associated with yoga. Nothing wrong about business per se, unless we uh, enter into some kind of a crass commercialization of this very sacred uh, knowledge discipline that the humanity has evolved in a way. But then, as I said, number of people who understand yoga or who have a desire to understand yoga, who don't know that they don't know about yoga, are now shifting towards people who want to know about yoga, which is also very important, very critical. And therefore, we certainly have come a long way within last uh, nine years or so. We also have achieved a little bit of demystification of yoga, if I may say, because the practitioners, generally speaking, are trying to understand various benefits of yoga and since yoga, the beauty of yoga is that uh, you cannot preach yoga, you have to practice yoga. Unless you practice, perhaps you cannot preach with the element of authenticity attached to it. And therefore some demystification is also happening. Of course, the IDY also helps us to create some kind of a buzz around that in the modern parlance. And therefore, some celebratory uh, element is also associated with, with that. And people are looking at it uh, as something, if I may use the term, which is very cool, is it not? To be a yoga practitioner, it's considered as very cool. And nothing wrong about it. If many people look at it and uh, try to adopt and make yoga as a part of their day-to-day -day life, there is nothing wrong about it. The therapeutic value of yoga is also now uh, becoming a part of the realization of the yoga practitioners. So having reached at a particular level, how do we look forward? First of all, I believe, and all of you are yoga practitioners, yoga enthusiasts, people committed to the promotion of yoga. If I may suggest, that we now also have to take this entire movement to a different level. Firstly, can we have some more research based, based on rigorous research, if I may add, some academic content creation about yoga? People who are practicing, I would also say they should be writing down, they should be analyzing things, they should be sharing their experiences. That will create and provide us with a pool of uh, uh, knowledge resources kind of, which are very authentic, which are experience based. And that will help all those researchers who want to establish the authenticity of yoga. And therefore, content creation is one thing which I believe we should be working towards. Those who are practicing yoga, maybe once in a week or few days in a month, more regularity in their practice of yoga is also required, which will help us in communicate to the people about the benefits of yoga. And of course, I already have mentioned about deeper research. This will add, in a way, to the current academic uh, syllabus of medical education or healthcare education as well. Because today, unfortunately, the traditional medicinal education, education in medicinal sciences, doesn't consider consider yoga or yoga related things are hardly 
seen incorporated in that uh, formal structure of uh, medical education. I believe that is the next level which we have to work for. Secondly, this movement of yoga also has to ensure that we reach up to every nook and corner of the globe. Let us not leave any part of the world untouched by yoga. For that also all of us will have to work together, I believe. And lastly, when we find that the humanity is looking for peace, every kind of peace, not just the wars that happen and the conflicts that take place, but peace within the human body, within our hearts. And in that context, I believe, yoga, which as was explained beautifully by previous speakers as well, is about addition, is about union, is about connectivity. And yoga tells us how our body, our mind, our intellect, and our spiritual quotient are in fact organically connected with each other. And that takes us to the element of peace, which is the prerequisite of the supreme bliss. The entire globe, today they talk about uh, happiness index and several such thing, themes, but uh, the bliss index, I believe, if somebody really works towards that, can become a part of our reality if we spread the message of yoga all over the world. And in that context, I believe, we all, those who are practicing, have a more onerous responsibility. And I believe events like this, conferences of this kind, they have called it summit, isn't it? So generally, in summits, we have seen that two warring nations and their heads come together and try to find peace. This is a summit of harmony. This is a summit of uh, uh, togetherness, kind of. And therefore, this is a very different summit. So, let this journey be continuing towards that goal of uh, ensuring that every human being on this earth realizes about that supreme bliss. In India, as all of you are aware, and in one way or the other, I'm sure you are uh, associated with India, the idea of India, Indic philosophy and everything, where everything that we see or that, that is a part of uh, Indic philosophy, whether it is the spiritual democracy that we have, which is ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti, where we say that God is one and people describe it differently, but God is one. We also find that the diversity, which is the apparent uh, uh, characteristic, is in fact the diverse manifestations of our innate unity. So there again, uh, we, we, we understand the importance of yoga, advaita, as what we call. Our relationship with Mother Nature, again, tells us that we have to be grateful about Mother Nature always. And that has been a part of Indian philosophy and thinking. Likewise, I believe the idea of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. See, uh, world, it says one family, one uh, earth and one future. One family, that is important. It doesn't say one society. It doesn't say one uh, house. It says one family. Because family is about relationship. Family is about a sense of belonging. Family is about mutuality, our concerns about each other, because we are related. And that reminds me that uh, this particular journey has to be continuing all along, not only to spread the message of uh, India or Indic philosophy or yoga for that matter and 
take this entire movement to a different level, but also to go deeper into the meaning of human life. I remember whenever uh, I meet such wonderful people, what uh, a very celebrated uh, British journalist who met India as his home and wrote wonderful books about India. His name is Mark Tully, about 90 years old maybe. And he has written a beautiful book which is called as No Full Stops in India. Wonderful book. I would certainly recommend all of you to read that book to understand what India is all about. And what he tells in a very succinctly portrayed picture of how misperception continues to be there about India, within India and outside India as well. In one of his famous quotes, Mark Tully says, the character, and I'm quoting, characteristic genius of Indian mind is to take the beliefs of the common man, sorry, the characteristic genius of the Indian mind is not to shake the beliefs of the common man, but to lead them by stages to the understanding of the deeper philosophical meaning behind their beliefs. But the Western world, excluding you all, but the Western world and the Indian elite, and there are many, who emulate it, which is the Western world, ignore the genius of the Indian mind. They want to write a full stop in a land where there are no full stops. But my speech has a full stop, so I'll <laughs> conclude it over here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable President ICCR. Your speech may have a full stop, but uh, I'm sure the message that you have given to all of us will never have a full stop and we will continue walking on the path of self-exploration and holistic well-being with yoga. You also mentioned the importance of uh, Vasudhev Kutumbakam in 21st century, particularly when G20 has taken it as its motto this year, one earth, one family, one future. And uh, as you mentioned about the reach of yoga should spread, I was just observing that horizontal reach will certainly spread, but vertical reach we can see we have audience here from a six month old child to the Swamiji who is 80 years old. So we have a good reach of yoga, and I'm sure this child is blessed. He is listening to all those things at the age which I never heard about yoga. And we also have a presence of Honorable Swami Shivananda. Look the way he is carefully watching us. That how sincere our efforts will be in next two days to achieve the objectives of this today's conference. I would like to again extend my deepest thanks to Honorable President ICCR for being, being here today. Honorable Ambassador of India in Germany, P. Harishji, ICCR Deputy Director General Abhay Kumarji, Mayor of Horn but Meinberg, Dr. Stella. Did I say something else? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pronunciations. So, and director of the Tagore Center, Ms. Trisha Sachleka, head of the county, Ms. Ina, president of European Yoga Federation, Swamiji, and our beloved uh, Sukhdevji, masters from different parts of the world and to all the audience today. Looking forward to have wonderful time and next two days together in the feeling of oneness. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. 
And we'll conclude with three times Om and Shanti, peace for body, mind, and the highest peace. <laughs> Om. Satguru Shivananda Maharaj Ki Sarava Santana Ji Ki So thank you very much to all the dignitaries. Thank you all the masters and teachers and the auditorium. Thanks to all the organizers from United Consciousness, from ICCR. Thanks to all from here from Yoga Vidya who have been working hard to make this happen. And thank you all. I think the sessions can be started by 12. Yes, by t um, 12 Uhr, so by 12 o'clock, we'll start with the uh, different lectures here. So now there's breakfast in the dining area in Mahameru. There are special parts which are for the speakers and the international guests. It's either in, in Vrindavan or in, I think there's some the chairs outside also if you want to sit outside it would be nice that we meet each other in the next few days and also maybe the members of yoga european yoga federation confederation can also meet then european federations will get even closer so thank you very much Om Shanti.